All right. What's up, fellas? How's it going, man? All the technical issues are now done, I, I hope. Uh, what's up, guys? What's going on, dude? Thank you so much for Ooh, having us. What's up? Yes, sir. Thanks for having us. Yeah, man. I, uh, I figured I would start this conversation with a confrontation. Andres, are you ready for this? Yeah, oh, I know what boy. it's about. I know you know what it's about. I don't. Why did, why did, you want me to answer it before? Say... You want me to answer it before you even ask, like, or you actually say <laughs> the conversation? The actually, yeah, yeah. It's why? Why haven't you gonna... invited back into the podcast, into the nutrition <laughs> blueprint podcast? Like, yeah. Did we get fired? Did we get? Fired? No, you like, didn't get fired. fired. No, honestly, like, I just kind of been putting the, the the podcast on the back burner, to be honest. Like, you know. Really. So, yeah. I mean, like. I, I'm, st I'm still doing it but it just hasn't been as consistent that it, it's still we're still posting an episode every week and it's been great yeah. but um but yeah i just i've been just focused on other things as you know not as much so i just record quickly do an hour thing and then just be done with it you know some some value some content and then just put it out but haven't really kind of put as much effort into it in fact i've i've loaded all the like the the podcast stuff to people on my team and i just show up and record and you know that's it so but I promise I'll bring it back. So there's uh, me getting ahead of uh, of it and making sure that I kind of the like, confrontation. You know, tap, <laughs> yeah. Tap, tap, tap it in. Yeah. Like, you know. Well, like, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> All right, guys. It was a great call. Uh, you kind of you kind of stole my thunder there. But I actually uh, did want to know, Andres, why Tony and I have not been invited back. So I guess that makes a little bit of sense, but it doesn't make me feel well, better. Well, that was Tony, a lie. Make... You want the truth? Like, I don't, I, I don't like Tony, does it make you feel better? <laughs> it doesn't. It does. but, well, I but, said, I said, no, what I said was like, that was, that was a lie. If you want the truth, I just don't like none of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's because, it's because you shouldn't have done double or nothing on the bet with me on this. I told you not to, not to mess with me, dude. Yeah, yeah what was the bet? Yeah, it's what it is, man. Um, no, but for real, guys, that's literally the reason I haven't. Yes, he's like, it. what's the bet, dude? I want to know the bet. Why so have I not been involved the, in this? The CrossFit Open happened, and oh God, I off. made a bet yeah. with someone at my um, gym, a beer and a book, like who would do better. And then I was like, well, let me bet on the rest because I know he's going to beat me. But, you know, in all good things, you know, let's try it out. And Andres just got super competitive, as always, even though I beat his ass and whoop every week. But anyways, I digress. Uh, on to the point was that he beat me the first two. And I'm like, I bet I could beat you if I did it scaled. He's like, no way. You want a double or nothing that bet, buddy? I'm like, let's go, dude. Double and or I nothing. Got and I, like, I got him in two yeah, out of three. I got him in two out of three workouts. Well, see, you, I mean, you decided. Wait, were all of your workouts scaled? TC, we're all going to no, so, listen. No. Like, let me get, let me let me tell you a full story. He, this guy comes in like blazing, like I'm going to beat you in the open, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm laughing and I'm like, this is fun. So I, I was like, OK, cool. We had not talked about scale right at this point. So he all does right, the so work. For, hold on real quick. You need to describe what scale is because I don't know if a lot of our well, I can't for believe people listening listeners. in like the, the, the okay. CrossFit Open, it's like this like worldwide like online um qualif what well, not qualifier, it's just essentially an online it is a qualifier, but they release yeah. three workouts. You pay 20 bucks, you get into it, um, and you basically go and do the workouts in like a, a CrossFit affiliate, or you have to record yourself, you have to have to have a judge and everything do your workouts and um, okay. you submit them online. Um, and there's like a worldwide ranking, right. From like the CrossFit game athletes doing this workouts to obviously like, you know, the Tonys, right. That are, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Andres is ranked. Okay? Bro, Don't come I said at that him. I was going okay. to use, I was, gonna wear use glasses? You got some wrong I was going to, glasses, seriously, dude? I was going to, this is like ball busting time. And this is the first time we get to do this. So like prepare, I love it. praise yourselves. Like Tony, this is, do you made a big mistake, bro? Point is, <laughs> that you know like he starts doing the workout the first one like he comes in super proud is like i got 140 i was like that's cute i got 271 like i literally got almost like oh, more God. Than so i was like okay cool. maybe dude like you, we may need to kind of test this out scaled he does the second one scaled i beat him in the rx version rx means like prescribed scaled means like the lower uh it's usually lower weight or sometimes like it's not usually lower reps it's just like either modified movements and stuff like that the second one i got you the third one was the one that you got me scaled right and he hold was like on, by hold on the, the second one i did not do scaled the second one i did as is but yeah. then nate who i also challenged with this 
was like, oh, I did it. And he beat me by one. And I was like, did you do it RX? He's like, no, I did it scaled. And I'm like, motherfucker, I can do a scale and beat the shit out of you. <laughs> but didn't you do uh, it again? And then you also, and I, and like I also still got you numbers. on it. <laughs> you repeated I, I did it. it one day after the other, bro. My legs were sore. Uh, see, those, those are, that's the kind of things, Dude, that's the kind of excuses that somebody makes. Not enough tart cherry beat. juice, man. Point is, I'm, point I'm is, gonna need so to know. first workout, first workout, I got him. Second workout, both options, scale and on scale. And both of them, actually, I kind of got him. The third one, he told me, okay, I got this. And like, perfect. So I did the workout. I got like nine, like it was like 959. He got 1013. So it wasn't, or something like that. It wasn't really, no, you got less. What was it, what, the time that you did? I think it was 10, I think you're 10, 15 or something, because I had to like redo the weights and all that. And I learned no, no, you, from you the got first 10, 15, time. but you redid it and you did like under nine minutes. Yes. Correct. Right. So, so I got him in the first one, but he repeated it and he actually got better time. Right. So like, that's the only workout he got me scaled. So let's not even talk about RX. Right. So like, that's, that's like the whole premise of everything, but I kind of said double or nothing, but the point is that, you know, I got him in two out of three. So technically speaking, I still got him scaled. He just didn't really say double or nothing. No, 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 yeah, no, no, the, no. Bet, the bet itself was during the third one. Correct. No, the no, bet itself started the from the very thing. beginning. It started from okay. the beginning, but I said double or nothing. I, I beat you on, on scale workouts and I got him in like, you know, I guess you can call it like we got kind of one on one because like the second one he did scale and the third one he did scale. I got him in the on the second one. I he didn't get me like he got me on the third one. Okay, that's it. So it kind of looks like and you guys going need back one to more. like let's just hey one minute guys like <laughs> what, we gotta like because like I, you're not gonna you're, you're not gonna prove that this has now become the you're not gonna move past podcast. that like like then like nothing <laughs> happened but. He was just now he's competing on whoop strain, which is, you know, we can kind of okay. talk about this entire situation. Whoop strain <laughs> is not necessarily something that explains like how like great you do. Maybe perhaps because I'm fitter, actually my heart rate is lower. And because of the fact that maybe like my strain doesn't need to be as higher. So anyways, uh, yeah, good to see you guys. A Andy Ayesta just coming in and just making it his own coming pod. in hot. That's it. I'm going to mute you for five minutes on the desk. Shut up. <laughs> Uh, it's like hey, around it's the horn it is it is right it's good to see you guys i think what i heard uh from that exchange right there is that you need one more competition and it needs to go live just so that i can view it and have fun Let's with do it. it okay a so beer I, I drinking competition yeah i don't think i've ever seen andres chug a beer i don't know if he can do it can it's do not it. classy enough i don't it's not gonna happen i can do it <clears throat> all right prove it <laughs> go get a beer right now we'll be it's, right back hold on i'll go grab a beer it's one o'clock your time into a cup, yeah. <laughs> uh no but hey i'm excited to have you guys on i think one of the things that i've been trying to do with past guests is uh having people back on and just doing life updates and there's a lot of things i wanted to check in with you guys about anyway so um i mean andres you just took 10 minutes so i'm gonna i'm gonna you're gonna go second okay uh <laughs> Tony, life updates. Uh, I know that you're doing a lot of traveling. So, so tell me a little bit more about what's going on in life, man. Uh, currently still in Spain. Been here about two months, two and a half months. Got a couple weeks left here. Been loving it. It's really helped me change my perspective on things. Uh, I'm someone who likes to plan very much in, a, in advance, like know what things are going on. But uh -huh. being in Europe, it's taught me that like I do need to take some day-to-day -day things, like not be so stressed about things I can't control. Uh, yeah. also not take things for granted because in the States we can do Amazon. We get things literally the next day, if not in two days, I can literally go out anytime during the day and up until let's say 10 o'clock at night and from seven in the morning, probably go to a grocery store, go out to yeah. eat at any time. If I wanted to here, um, restaurants open from one to one, one or one 30, depending on the restaurant and they close the last person can come in at three. And I'm like, okay, okay so what happens between three and eight o'clock at night, no restaurant gives food. You can get drinks. Um, they yeah. might have a couple snacks. And by snacks, I mean like uh, like an egg tortilla or something. Um, but you can't really eat anything. So you have to wait again till eight o'clock at night. And they take their opening in from eight till about the last guest can be 10 or 11, depending on the restaurant. And that's it. Um, we even went to a small town that had about a thousand inhabitants. And we went to go eat. And it was uh, on a Wednesday night. It was nine o'clock at night. We go there. And the person's like, are, are, you, are you still open? They're like, well, I can call the, the cook to come back if you want. And we're like, absolutely not. I couldn't imagine someone that's Please already at don't home. Don't be that guy. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I've learned that sometimes we have, like in the United States, we're very capitalistic and this isn't a political podcast, but in the point, what I'm trying to say is that we take hey, advantage of you how can say whatever you want. <laughs> things are open, um, yeah. how much accessibility we have to things and we don't ever notice it. Um, but one thing I will say here, I feel like the food is definitely fresher because they don't have like frozen chicken or frozen salmon is readily available. It's like say fresh fish, fresh chicken. Like yeah. you have to you cook it and use it that day. It's not like, yes, you can meal prep here. Absolutely you can, but like you buy a lot of chicken and cook it for the week versus like you can just buy fresh chicken every day because it's going to go bad in the next few days yeah. because it's literally like just been cut, put here and given to you, whether it's food, uh, I mean, vegetables, chicken, fruit, whatever, like you got to use it. So I think that's just really being a, open to like taking things a lot slower than what I'm used to. Like yeah. I'm such a go, go, go have things planned, move on to the next thing that that's not how this works. Yeah. Um, and I, I've loved that. I think it's helped me spend more time with my daughter, more time with my wife, more time with my mom. My dad's visiting now too. And really realizing that life is more than just putting all these things and getting things done, but it's about yeah. enjoying the moments. Like we all set up our businesses to, to have better lifestyles. Um, yeah. And I even saw Andres post in, in a Facebook group that what he did is, is take himself out of the practitioner mindset and be the CEO mindset, which is very difficult. Yeah. For all of us here, I would say, yeah. um, but for me, it's yeah. been difficult because I'm not seeing as many clients. I'm handing them off to coaches and I trust that they're doing the right thing. And they are because the clients are getting the results, but it's almost like, what do I do with my time? And it's like, well, you decided to not work so much. So you can spend time with your family, but it's, it's this like inner yeah. play that I have with myself. Like, why am I not working? You should be working. You should be working yeah. on lead gen or other things. So um, Europe really helped me like kind of take a step back and be like, it's okay, man. Like people here barely work and they live their best life. Um, yeah. People yeah. here drink all the time. I don't understand. Like I still do CrossFit. I'm like, how do you literally work out all the time when you're literally having like a lunch with a glass of wine or two yeah. and dinners, a couple beers, you're going to go have snacks with some vermouth. Like I've been doing it and I'm just like, Oh my God, I'm exhausted. Like I don't <laughs> drink every day because I can't, like I'm trying to work yeah. out. And I, I prioritize. It crushes you. <laughs> yeah. But, and also uh, no one hydrates here. Everyone is literally on the dihydrate status. Uh, the only Bro. thing that I would look at, I went to a restaurant last night. This is probably bathroom. Someone's piss look like fucking apple juice. So I apologize. And I almost <laughs> like yacked. I'm like, you motherfuckers never piss. What's wrong with you people? Um, yeah. Like, they, There's no bathrooms anywhere. I'm over here like running around <laughs> pissing myself because I can't find a bathroom. They're like, bathroom, what's that for? Like, what are you doing? Just have a beer. You'll be fine. And I'm like, that's going to make me pee more. But anyways, yeah. people do not hydrate here. So people take things slower, but they also don't hydrate. Um, yeah. That's all I got for you right now. <laughs> we're we're going to, Hey, we're going to have to come back to that. Cause there, there's, and, and Andres, I'll, I'll ask you the, the same question here. And I want us to kind of clue in on like seasons of business and seasons of life type stuff. So let's go ahead and put a pin in that. Uh, Tony, it has now become your job to make sure that people are hydrated there. Like I, I'm just not going to take this as an excuse. Like it's your job now. <laughs> All right. So that's, that's the first thing. Uh, Andres, uh, life updates, man, since we last chatted. So I did the CrossFit. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I will meet the shit out of you if you go back into that. All right. <laughs> Actually, there is, there's a little bit of an update there, too, I think, since the last time we chatted anyway. So you'll, you'll get that organically. Go ahead, man. Life updates. How updates. you doing, bro? Um, let's see. Uh, personal updates. Uh, it's, it's been, I mean, I'm pretty open about this, but it's been a pretty rough um six months for us um we have me and my wife we've been trying to conceive for closer to a year now uh, we got pregnant last september uh, august that's when the first miscarriage happened and it happened back to back january and february so it's uh it's been a bit of a you know kind of roller coaster more for her, for me, definitely it's affected me, you know, and, and I, I, but, but not as much as it has her and definitely has been kind of difficult on the personal side of things. So we yeah. are now searching for answers and seeing doctors and different things like that. So we're kind of hopeful. Um, and that's on the personal side of things and, um, business wise, like we've been, you know, really growing and, and, and really kind of focusing a lot on our growth in our company. We've been revamping our offer and our program. And it's honestly, we're at a point where we really like, um, it's, it's been cool to see people inside of our program enjoying it so much. 
So yeah. because we kind of created such a very strong sense of community with it um, that has been really awesome and really cool to be able to to witness like how we can help them. And uh, that's sort of like the main things we brought in our first uh, full time uh, nutrition coach in our program. Uh, her name is Ceci, and she started uh, with us kind of full time in like in January. She lives in Mexico City. So she's mm -hmm. like bilingual Spanish speaker. Um, an English speaker, a nutrition coach. See, she's, I don't, I don't call that a registered dietitian because she's not registered in the United States, but she is yeah. a licensed nutrition coach in, um, um, in, uh, in, in Mexico. So it's been cool, man. It's been, it's been great. A lot of, you know, trying to, like, I started this year with 35 clients and now I'm like down to 10. So I'm doing the same thing with Tony's doing to try to really kind of like release a load of clients so I can focus more on like, you know, growth and scaling and, um, and different things like that. So that's kind of been happening on that. Um, got in a couple uh, pieces on ink. So I'm like now, dude. Yeah, you're gonna have like to. That. You're gonna and have to describe got, a little like, bit yeah. more, please. Kind of like text. So I've been kind of trying to get uh, more things that have meaningful things to me. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, haven't been traveling as much. We went to Mexico for a few days uh, where we had a wedding and stuff like that. So I was good and spent kind of like you know the beginning of the year with my brother in Vegas. Um, but yeah, it's sort of like the, the kind of like the updates of everything that we've got yeah. going on, but we're healthy. We're good. We're, we're doing good, man. I miss the, the shit out of all of you guys, man. You know, it, it's Thanks. crazy. I don't, I don't know how you all feel about this. I don't think that TC, you and I have had conversations, uh, throughout Andres, I think us uh, on that side, a little bit less about like trajectory, but you know, we, we were all taught this like model of more people, right? And we all had like 35 to 40 people. And then simultaneously, almost together, we're like, all right, this shit is, this is not it. I'm going to dwindle <laughs> this down. I'm going to dwindle this down to like, like 10 people, more or less of people that I really, really want to pour into. So it kind of brings up this thought and, and it kind of is right in line on the desk with what you're talking about on the personal side and, and TC a little bit with you as well. I mean, what, in reference to seasons of like, business, like seasons of development. I mean, what are you noticing right now for the two of you are like the most important things? TC, let's, let's start with you, man. Like, what are you noticing? Bro, what, you haven't given us uh, your update. How are you doing? What's new with you, man? <laughs> Can't just slide over that. Just kind of like, eh, all right, well, you know, all right. Cause I asked you how to pin in my question. Be a, then, okay. Yeah. Put a pin in, your all right, question, put a pin in my question. Uh, I, I'm, I'm doing the same thing to be honest too. Like I noticed that 35 to 40 people. And as a pod family, as you're listening to this, you already know the story because I've talked about it a billion times. Um, I noticed that like, that wasn't it either. So I, I really wanted to pour into, you know, just around 10 people. And it's been really great because one of the things that I really wanted to do when I started to understand the role of like trauma healing is like, okay, you have these really, really high performing people that don't really know how to get their needs met and they haven't really been conditioned to do so. And they really want to help others. Like what do they need? And it's been really nice to go from just like performance and nutrition coaching into habits and, and allowing them to start helping them to build systems in their life, their business and other things. And like, dude, I'm just in a state of, of having a lot of fun right now on that side. Uh, obviously the baby is due in June. I I'm, I don't even know what's going to do to our life, bro. Like, I, like Rory just turned six this last week and it's like a whole nother level of shit. Like she's just like, it's like a whole new, new level of problems. And I think as our little boy comes into the mix, uh, the next six to eight months are, are going to be life-changing, but, uh, I'm up for it, man. I'm the healthiest version of myself that I've been in like ever. Um, I miss you guys, man. I, I wish I, there's a part of me that wishes I lived in Florida. Should I just like go over like, Hey, I'm coming over. <laughs> you know what I mean? You should. But yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't like Florida though, man. You guys moved to Arizona. Why? Nope. Why don't you like Florida? Not 120 it's, degree uh, weather. Um, no, it's, outside. it's, you're sweating all the time when you're in Florida. That's just not what I'm down with. And y'all are crazy diaper, too, man. Dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the type of laws and stuff. Simple solutions, crazy. bro. Yeah, like you're you're a different level of Texas. So what's me. the temperature <laughs> outside right now in your in your home right now, Des? It's uh seventy nine. 
<laughs> okay, that's not bad. You no, know, but yeah. it's it's seventy nine here too. You know, so but I know last week was like one hundred and twenty. So um, I'm, I'm cool. <laughs> it's not it's not until June, you bitch. Okay, uh, but no, man, things are things are things are great on my side too. Um, and this is right in line with like the question too. But I wanted to ask you guys, like my marriage is probably as strong as it's ever been right now, and I think it's had to go through a lot of different seasons and phases. And it's really nice because now I'm understanding my role in a lot of it. So I, I wanted to know, like going back to my question before TC rudely interrupted me with my story um, <laughs> is like, what are you, what are you noticing on? Like, it could be the relationship side. It could be a lot of sides. Like, what are you noticing right now in your season of life that are like the most important things to you? The most important things to me are, are and I think it always will be is my family. Um, yeah. I want to make sure that my business succeed, but I also want to make sure my family succeeds. So I think they intertwine, but success is different for everyone because you even stated, stated or stated um, that you are your healthiest self. And I wanted to ask you what that meant because some of us have so many different definitions of it because we always hear people, let's say, for example, six pack abs, is that health or not for you or whoever, but they're mentally unstable in a sense. Like they feel like they're missing out yeah. on so much. And so are they really bouncing it out? So are you really your healthiest self? Um, or the other side of it, right? Someone who's could be very obese, um, but they're mentally in a great spot, right? Mm -hmm. So what is that healthy version of you? So to answer your question, season right now, like I think the important things to me are my family, making sure that they have everything they need, um, which I think those needs are being met. And then from my own personal side, I also feel like my mental health is something I've been addressing a lot more in the past year with a therapist. And it's really yeah. helped my communication with my wife. And it's, it's been tough, a lot of tough conversations, tougher than I've ever had, even with my mom and with my dad, but it's yeah. made me, made me feel better about what I'm doing. And it's helping me become a better person in, in my personal life, but also in business, because learning to have these tough conversations at home, is going to help me become a better leader because that translates to having a happier life, which means I can continue to be my best self, not only for my coaches, but for my clients as well. Yeah. TC, like why, why tough conversations? Like, why are they necessary? I, I mean, I know, but like for our listeners out there, like, why are they necessary? For me, it's like, I, I mean, to, to go personal, I mean, when I was younger, I used to just bottle it all up and then I would probably drink something and call it cause self-inflicting pain. Not like I would punch a wall is what I mean. Cause I'd get angry yeah. or something about something cause something wouldn't go my way. Um, so it's not like I'd, cut myself for anything in that sense but it would i would like punch a wall and cause cause pain to myself and then i would just explode and it's like yeah. that's not a healthy healthy for anyone so having that tough conversation allows me to not hold it and bottle it up and have these depressed thoughts or even worrisome thoughts so communication yeah. is always key and it's tough because it's not like i want to have these conversations because it's like uh i'm struggling to say this and i even yeah. like preface with like this is going to be a tough conversation and i say it and there's emotions like we're we're crying and it's it's not easy but it's necessary for growth it's necessary yeah. for us to get closer and understand each other yeah and i think that that piece is special you know i i definitely want to address like how we all view health in our own lives so tc we'll definitely put a pin in that because i think it is important but on the rest to kind of kick it to you i mean you mentioned a little bit more on the personal side you mentioned kind of where you where you are in your season of business I mean, what is most important to you right now? Like, wh what are you finding with where you're at right now in life? Tough question to answer because I think every day is different. Um, but like, uh, like Tony, I have been working a lot on on the mental health side of things. Um, I have also been seeing a therapist for started last, not this past December, but the one before, but I took a break and I started more consistently. Um, I think it was around November this, the, like last year. Um, and definitely went through a bit of a rut, uh, January, February, um, on many things in my life where I was just hating everything, right? Like I hated logging into work. I hated, you know, building my business. I dreaded it actually. Um, I did yeah. not want to jump on meetings with my team. I, just, I was just trying to do what I could to get by. And like, you know, I, it was, it's very tough 
Um, and, um, uh, and I don't know, obviously it was just kind of like, you know, a combination of everything that we've been going through personally, or, or just, you know, not finding myself. And honestly, like, I think in the February, March, it's kind of when I turn a current corner, um, and things started to kind of get better. And it's crazy because it's, you know, uh, one of the things that we've been really working a lot is our spirituality and sort of like, you know, yeah, yeah. our, are yeah and it's and gb is getting a lot more it's getting a lot more into that as well and it's been th different in a good way right like i think it's open new avenues of communication and experience and 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 just just you know I, it's kind of hard to explain but you know some things that we just kind of been doing that have been super um interesting to us that have just opened new avenues for us to explore um from like you know even like one day like you know full moon and like gb walks me out and tells me like let's write everything down and we're gonna burn out all like the 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 stuff okay. that it's like you know on a piece of paper and all the bad feelings that we're having and then just suddenly the next day like just felt different Small right things. so really yeah. kind of like understanding that you know like this world that we're all one we're all connected like we're all kind of like part of the same kind of source of everything and and you know getting to to understand that at a deep level it's kind of one of the biggest most important things that i have kind of come to understand and and what i tattooed in my arm which is it's an old adage that reads this too shall pass or this too will pass it's something yeah. that i try to live by now on a daily basis you know we can have incredible moments of you know, incredible high revenue months. If you look at the monetary side of things, or you can have incredible months because, you know, you realize you're going to have a baby um, yeah. or you can have incredible months because of the fact that you were just so social and friends and all that kind of stuff like that. But just like that, the next day that can be taken away. Um, yeah. And, and the key thing is realizing that that is just all part of, you know, this, this, this thing that we call life. So yeah. coming to the, to my senses around all that has been like very, like, you know, tr transcending for me. And now I'm like choosing to look at life with a different lens. Not easy every day. It's like Mondays are usually not my favorite days, mostly because <laughs> of the fact that comes from a Sunday where I typically try to rest and, my, and Mondays is just more about like, okay, cool, like cool, how cool. do I want to approach this week? And, and I was yeah. just talking to GB this morning. It's just, it's difficult, right? Um, but that's kind of part of like what, what it's been like for me. Um, and I can say that I'm in a, I wouldn't say like I'm in the best, you know, time of my life where I'm feeling like everything is just kind of falling into place, but I just definitely feel like a lot better than I did two months ago where yeah. like it was, you know, down in the drains a little bit and yeah. now I'm kind of like, you know, rediscovering myself, I guess. Yeah. No, man, I, Andres, I love that. I mean, I, there's a couple of things that come to mind. One, I'm going to fight you. Contact me whenever you need it. Okay. Two, a lot of what you're talking about there, I think is super special is like the, the role of, of spirituality and in, in how we sort of occupy that space. Because Tony, you asked like, what's my version of health? It's not six pack abs. It's not any of that. It's for me, how am I interacting in all of my relationships, relationships to my body, my habits, my marriage, my emotional well-being? Like, how am I interacting with that? Because Andres, you talked about like the highs and lows of, of everything. And I think we've all had conversations about the highs and lows of the entrepreneurship journey. And you can't not attach yourself to that at times. And, and I think that piece is really hard. So like, Tony, going back to your question, like, how do I view health? For me, it's how am I interacting as my healthiest and, and highest self? Uh, because to me, when things have been the most rocky in my marriage, I, I think that I, I had to put a lot of blame on myself with how I was interacting with conflict, how I was interacting when I got triggered. Like there's just a lot of like radical responsibility that I've had to do. So I, I wonder for you guys, we've had conversations about this off air, but I would love to bring it here because I don't think enough people talk about it. They talk about it over text and kind of in their own spaces, but really not in an open. I mean, how do you deal with the highs and lows? Because it's really hard to not attach yourself to the success of a really great month. And then at the same time, a failure to like a month that didn't do as well. So like, I don't know, Tony, let's start with you, man. Like, how do, how do you attach yourself? How do you unattach yourself to that? And, and how do you sort of interact with the highs and lows in a, in a healthy place? Man, 
uh, it changes, as Andres says, but uh, a, a great example was like last month. Uh, I remember I, I looked at the numbers um, and I was like, oh man, this was a shit month. And then like yeah. all of a sudden I noticed I missed all these people that I didn't account for. Um, oh, the person that does my finances. I was like, what about this person? This person like, oh shit. And I was like, oh shit, I actually crushed it. Even though I went through like two weeks, the last two weeks, like, oh my God, it's gonna suck. But then the last three days, I was like, damn, I, I freaking crushed it. Um, yeah. And when it was so low, I was like, dude, it's okay. Just gotta keep pushing through. Um, you're spending time with your family. You're enjoying life. And if you keep worrying about what that, if you keep tying your emotions to that income, you're never going to help yourself move better. And I think that's been like something so that helps hard. me get through it. Like trying to disconnect myself from it, connect mm -hmm. myself to loving the process, not what the end result is. Um, so meditation helps me a ton. That's one thing that like, if I don't do, whether it's before clients, before anything else, like I just am in a bad headspace the whole day. And as soon as I meditate, it's like a weight is lifted off my shoulder. And similar to Andres, like Sunday's a rest day. You come into a Monday. I know one of the first things I have to do in the morning is meditate to get me in that right headspace just to ensure that I'm, I'm my best for everyone I'm interacting with. Tony, how, do, how does it do that for you? Because I mean, I don't know. It's probably different for a lot of us, but like, how does it specifically do that for you? Like, what, is, what does meditation bring for you? I think it gives me time to myself. Even like I, I go to a gym and I work out, right? Do CrossFit workouts. I like group classes because I used to write plans for myself or find plans online, whatever that is. And I would follow them, but it's just like, I like that group atmosphere. So yes, I am working out by myself. It's not like I'm switching with anyone. And even if it's a partner workout, but it's like, I'm not truly by myself. I have other people I'm interacting with in that moment. So I feel like I get those 10 minutes a day to just really be in my thoughts and be okay with it and really just let go. So meditation allows me to let go of my frustrations and, and try and stay present, which is very mm -hmm. difficult for me, especially yeah. for all of us, I'm sure with our business, right? Cause crap, I have a phone right here that has messages. I'm sure I could read. I have emails. I get the, the contacts that I, I use Slack with my clients, so many things that we get buzzed with. I, and funny enough, when I was in Valencia, uh, we, we had a, it was a two story apartment, I guess you could say and the, the top floor is where I'd work and the bottom floor is where Maya would play. So I'd literally leave my phone upstairs because my wife called me out on it. She's like, if you're gonna come downstairs and just be on your phone, just stay upstairs. It's like, holy yeah. shit. Like that's yeah. a tough conversation. So yeah. I, from yeah. that point on, and even yeah. now I leave the phone in the room, unless I'm going out there for a purpose, like to be with, be with my family. So I don't even bring my phone out of this space. Um, so meditation allows me to remember that because sometimes I meditate, well, most times I meditate with my phone. So it brings me to that attachment to it again, but that meditation allows me to remember like, like why are you doing everything? It gives me that moment of reflection yeah. and then moving forward with it. Yeah. I There's a good that. book, um, a plug in here that I just read. That's uh, the first one I read from him actually kind of changed my life, but I read it at a point with my life where it was just different than it is right now. Um, that first book, it's called The Power of Now. Um, and I'm sure you may have heard of it. It's by Eckhart Tolle, and he's been on Oprah a million times. Um, but I read that book a long time ago, and it's like very old. Um, and uh, but I decided to read his second book, which is called New Earth. And um, it was very profound. Um, and I think it's the main reason why I decided to like freaking tattoo shit my my body because of it, because of the fact it was just reminders. And the one most important kind of, like, I guess, like takeaway from, from the entire thing is that, you know, like it, it's, it's just presence and, 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 you know, just here, right? Like, and that's, you know, time, it's an illusion, doesn't exist in the way I kind of like think about it because, you know, the conversation we're going to be having in like 20 minutes from now, it's just non-existent. Now, the problem is our ego, which is just that, you know, con continuous Fucking voice ego. in our head just continues to kind of, the, it's, it's a very thirsty for, for um, our ego likes to, to accumulate things, accumulate, um, you know, people accumulate money, accumulate material things, accumulation, like it's, it's just driven by having more. Um, of everything, love, like all the different things like that. And realizing that or, or coming to a point where you become aware of that drive to accumulate, it's, it's the first most important weapon because awareness is it's the most important thing you could ever do. 
So I think the biggest breakthroughs I've ever had recently, it's understanding and knowing and stopping me when I'm, when, when ego actually takes the wheel. Right. And when it just, you How know, do you know when that happens stop. though, huh? How do you know when that happens for you? Cause I think that piece is a really, you know how I know this is the shit because, because you're not thinking of the moment you're not thinking of right now. Right. Yeah. So how do I know ego right now? is not on overdrive because I'm just having a conversation with you two. And I'm just focusing on, you know, the fact that I'm breathing and talking, right? Like if I'm thinking like, okay, what I'm going to say next. And what if, what if I say that it's not really nice or, oh man, like I'm thinking like, you know, there's like a bunch of these emails that I'm looking at right now that I haven't responded and I should have been responding. Maybe you should not have yeah. actually jumped in this like podcast here today, or you know what, maybe you should have, because you know, it's the right thing to do. That it's all ego talking. Like, now it's not yeah. even us, right? Us is just like, and, and, the, and the most important, craziest thing that I've ever realized too is the fact that creativity and growth and success happens whenever like we dissociate ourselves from it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, because otherwise it just becomes that one person that is always competing with yourself, competing with other people, competing with like, you know, again, trying to kind of gather, accumulating all the, all the different things like that, that are just, you know, are stealing the joy of, the present um and, and i think that's that's a big bit kind of you know issue that we typically tend to to run into i mean that book goes in depth into that it's hard to read it's not easy to read but it's definitely something that that has allowed me to just you know not it's not perfect right we still do it and we're gonna continue to do it until the day we die but you know the more like you know the, the book talks about like people search for enlightenment right and that kind of like big breakthrough in which you realize the meaning of life and stuff like that. And he talks about enlightening is the moment that you actually realize that you're just here right now and nothing else matters. So like we all get enlightened a little bit every moment when we realize that there's like smaller things that actually that are just bigger than just, you know, all the others. So it doesn't mean that it's bad to accumulate or it's bad to grow, just not necessarily making it like the, the, the pursuit of, of happiness. Yeah. And like, this is literally where happiness is going to be found because it never is. I think that's in the entrepreneurship space. I think that gets lost a lot is the value of, of everywhere, the now. dude. It's not just entrepreneurs. You don't think when so? You think about, no, when you think about accumulation, like you think about the actual person that is working day to day, they're working to actually make more money. They just don't know how, right? The person that the, the mom that is not an entrepreneur is just trying to kind of become the best mom that she can be like, and then she's just comparing to all the other moms to see obviously other kids are raising their kids just to make sure that they get, they, they are the best because I yeah. see it every day, right? Entrepreneurs, it's more about the pursuit of success and financial, you know, stability and, and, and having more money, accumulation of money, but we're all the same. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same. We're just in different kinds of, you know, industries or different kinds of mindsets. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like the ego would just wants to just accumulate as much as he can. And, yeah. and that's where that the problems typically kind of lie in. You know how I know this has to be like, the, I was actually talking to your, your wife uh, about books over like DMs. And we were like, hey, do you have any books that you would recommend? And we were kind of just going back and forth. I know that this is probably the next book that I need to put on is because I think we've all talked about Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I think, Andres, you haven't seen it. Or right, remind me. He's never. He's Which not one? See it. He's never going to see it. Okay. Which one? Always sunny in, always sunny in Philadelphia. No, well, dude, they, I haven't seen. They it. Have I know a, what you're talking about, but I haven't seen it. They now have a podcast, and they literally just dove into that book. So now I now I have to read it. No way. <laughs> yeah, they were they were they were talking like similar conversations about what we're talking about now is like in the now. So I, I think what I would love to kind of piggyback on that. I love that you brought that up. Is like also piggyback Tony on what you said what does your healthiest self look like? Tony, Me? go ahead. No, I don't say Tony. Silence. Dead air. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of yeah. pins and piggybacks in this podcast. We're pinning a lot of things and piggybacking. Uh, <laughs> uh, my healthiest self. Yeah, what does that look like? Being in a good mental space, absolutely. And I think that's the toughest one for me. I I'm good. I'm easy at routines. Once I have a routine, I can stick to it without a problem. I've still been able to work out here. I still eat fruits and vegetables. I still consume water. Um, but I think my mental space is where I find my healthiest. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not about 
having, you know, six pack abs. It's just being able to be strong and push through a workout. Uh, that's what it is for me. Like being able to wake up, hit a workout, feel great afterwards. Um, and then just being in the mental space. Um, I was told the other day, I was talking, having a conversation with my wife, like what's a good attribute that we each have. Um, one, one thing she said about me is patience. And that's one thing I never really picked up on. And I've now seen it in these past few days with our daughter. I'm just like, she might start crying. And I'm like, what do you need? And she continues crying. And I don't fall into like just giving her something. I'm like, you know, help communicate. How can I help you? Um, what do you need from me? And I've noticed with my wife, she might just go do something to automatically get her to calm down. So it's not only with our daughter, but also with my wife, with my mom, with my dad, it's just having patience. And sometimes I get frustrated with it because I'm like, oh my God, I, like, I just want to give the answer or help them find the end goal. So to me, to, for me to be my healthiest self, to have a good mental space where I have the capacity to have that patience for others. Yes. I like that. So it's kind of a, a collaboration there is like patience and then also your, your mental well being. Mm -hmm. I like that. And that's what about you? What's, what, what's your healthiest self look like? Six pack abs. So all the time crushing Tony, no, but, but, and, I would say physical, <laughs> but I would say physical fitness is something I'm always kind of like, I always kind of hung on to hang on to because it makes me feel good that I can do things. And, and honestly, like this, it, it, it's, it's funny. Like, again, we'll go back to the, the whole CrossFit thing, but the real, the reason honestly why I feel like it's so important to me is because of the fact that I get better by the year and I, and it makes me feel good. It's not You're necessarily rushing. from the competitive side of things. It's just the fact that I can, you know, the, the, the more that I get older, like the, the better I become in, in, in physical fitness. And, and that to me, it's a pretty cool thing. So, so I do think health for me, it's like physical fitness and, and, and GB talks about me, about this with me all the time, which is like, you know, you need that, right. You, you need to be able to, to get stronger and stuff like that, because a lot of times that brings you fulfillment and not necessarily that I'm trying to be the strongest or the best or anything like that. It's just being able to actually do it and feel mm -hmm. good at doing it. So part of me health it's being in good physical shape. Um, the second part of it is uh, just, you know, I think one of, one of the things that my therapist once told me, is like, you know, write a list of values or things that you actually value for yourself and then start to prioritize. I and I realized that a big kind of worry that I always have around finances is because I do value security and stability a lot. It's not a good or a bad thing. It's just what I have always led to believe. And I don't want to get into like a rabbit hole of, of, of this in here, but realize that that value, uh, it's, it's being created because of the fact that of what I went through with my family growing up. So point is that to me, like, and this is something I'm working on, a lot of times healthy also means financially stable. Now, that's not to say it's good because of the, at the end of the day, sometimes we're trying to kind of put a number into happiness and it's not necessarily that. But I like to be able to have enough to be able to sustain ourselves and to be able to, you know, I, one of the things that I was just like talking to, to, to my, my wife the other day, and, and again, going through my therapist when it comes down to financial freedom and what is financial freedom is being able to actually yeah, yeah. just go and buy anything you want without actually like looking at a price tag. And we, I think we have gotten to a point where we, we don't do that. Like, right. Like we were just thinking like if we need to go to the grocery store, we're not like, yeah, we may look at prices, but we're not necessarily saying like, okay, this is how much we can only buy today. Or, or like, you know, we went to Mexico and we're not necessarily thinking like, sorry, we can't really make it because of the fact that of this and this and that. Yeah, sure. Sometimes we say no, like there's a trip to Brazil for a wedding and we don't even know we're going to be able to make it. But because, but, but the, re, the, the truth is that we're not like stopping ourselves from like buying things we need or trying to kind of budget them out or whatever. Sometimes we do. That is really what financial freedom really means to me and being able to obviously do that at any kind of given time. So, so that is another part of like health that to me is important just to make sure that we have enough um, to be able to, to do the things that we can. But ultimately, it's just, you know, I think health now, it's kind of changed a lot for me, which is, you know, being in a really good place mentally, just like Tony said. Um, I think also with, with the part, that part, it's also communication and being to make sure that we're always kind of like, like me with my wife and my family, we're always like kind of vibing in the same kind of wavelength. Um, and yeah. that's, that's, I think the, the, the most important part of it. And whenever we're not, it's making sure that we bring awareness to it. So we can take the necessary steps so we can change that. Yeah. Andres, you mentioned early on that you kind of took a break from therapy. Um, 
why? Well, there are two reasons. I one is like the way that that therapy place worked is like you know you were supposed to see people every week or you were just oh, okay. kind of giving your spot to someone else. But we got to a point where I felt good, and um, she's like, you know, we can probably just stop at this point, and I did. But you know, it's interesting because she actually left that practice because of the fact that they had that restriction, and she started her own business, and now I am just seeing her. Um, nice. personally, or just like on her own. And then she told me that's the main reason why I decided to do this. But one really profound thing that she told me is that whenever I was going through the really rough times, we switch over my, my therapy sessions from like every two weeks to weekly, because she saw I was really struggling. Yeah. So like, but then she saw me actually getting out of the hole. And at that point, she said, this is a time in which you're going to tell me that you want to stop therapy. But just the fact that you got to this point doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get back into it again. And there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. And yeah. that really resonated with me because it made me realize that a lot of times like we, you know, the stuff that we do, right? Like we follow the program and do the things and stuff like that. And the moment that it ends, like we feel like we got all the answers that we needed. And the truth is that we don't. So mm -hmm. now I'm, it's an ongoing therapy thing. And even GB started therapy too, which was like a big battle for her because That's great. she has a awesome. lot of you know, baggage of her past and she has not yeah. been wanting to address this and she's probably going to need like years of therapy to be able to kind of work through all those different things. And it's very uncomfortable for her, but yeah, yeah. it's kind of part of that process too. So I think health is obviously good being in a good place uh, mentally as well. Amen. Yeah, dude, mental health therapy is, it's, it's a very vulnerable and hard task. Uh, and that us, you talked about like how like just past baggage, if you will, past conditioning, it's just, it's not going to take a couple sessions here and there. And in all likelihood, and I'll speak for myself here. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm probably looking at myself as, as pretty much a, a lifer, <laughs> you know, maybe not, uh, every other week. I mean, definitely seeing my therapist now it started at weekly and now it's at a point where it's every three to four weeks and, and as needed type of thing. But there's so much value in, in digging up some of the stuff that impacts your day to day, because I know for me, a lot of my past conditioning has found its way into my into fatherhood, into my relationships, into business. And oh, it's yeah. just it, it, it's hard not to it's hard to think about my life had I never done this. And I'm so glad that I did. And, and Tony, you and I have had conversations about like mental health therapy. So like for you, what prompted you engaging in your mental health? I mean, what, what do you think that was for you? Well, I have some good news and bad news. Let's go. <laughs> good news is I have to go. Okay. <laughs> bad news is I have to go. <laughs> but what prompted me is that I, I was going through a tough patch in my business. Yeah. And I knew I needed help from someone outside of my family. I needed help that someone that yeah. wasn't a business coach. It was more yeah. than just business and family. It's I needed someone that can help me mentally. I need someone yeah. that I could talk to. Not that I can't talk to my wife, not that I can't talk to my family, but I need someone else that I could be almost raw with everyone, not just, yeah. you know, having and learning to have those conversations with my wife so I can continue moving myself forward. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, hey, I want to be respectful of both your time. How are we doing on time, Andres? I don't have anything at two, but I do have some things to do, but I can stick around. Okay. All right. Tony, I'll. I'll ask you the questions that I wanted to ask later. I love you. Later. Love peace and chicken grease, guys. Hey, love peace. <laughs> All right, I'm glad you stayed along, buddy. Um, yeah, man, I, I, there's a couple other questions that I wanted to ask, and I'm not going to ask all of them because I wanted to get Tony's perspective too. But kind of gleaning back in on, on the rest for you, like the role of ego. I mean, how has that, how has that impacted some of the decisions and things that you are involved in over this past year. Can you kind of think back on that? Every decision is actually in a way has been made because of my ego, like the, the, the decision to, to want to kind of hit specific revenue targets or the decision to, to want to kind of grow. And, and I mean, I think not everything, but I think like, you know, all the things that, you know, we look at other people and we're like, okay, this guy's doing this and we want, I need to have that and I need to have this and I need to kind of pursue that. And, and, you know, and, and that accumulation, I feel like it's always kind of been what kind of drives us right now. Um, yeah. So I think in a way, it just it's driven a lot of the decisions that I've made my whole life, honestly. 
Um, yeah. You know, like when you're in college, it's like, you know, so you can kind of have this like great job and kind of get paid a lot of money, quote unquote. And mm -hmm. um, so you can have obviously the financial stability that you're looking for and and buy the house and buy this and buy that and stuff. So I think it's just it just doesn't stop. I think it's just, you know, bringing awareness to it. Yeah. No, man, I think it's special. You know, I, I think a lot of doing my own ego work, too. I, I notice how that has made its way into you know, working with clients made its way into business decisions, made its way into conflict in my marriage. There's just like so much. I'm glad that you brought that up because that's definitely going to have to be a book, uh, you know, on my, on my repertoire, because I've heard it talked about a couple of times. And now that you've said it, I'm, I'm going to have to yeah, bring that in. It's profound for sure. Um, but yeah, but it, it talks a lot about that. It talks about the ego. It talks about this concept known like the pain body, which is, you know, a part of us that it's just, it feeds on 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 pain right and and like yeah. for example like when you look at people that you know they continuously they they come from a very um toxic relationship with their families or their mothers or their fathers and then you just what you hear them talk about obviously kind of like say for example a woman that had a very um very very toxic relationship with the family or the dad and stuff like that and then all they hang out with is like with toxic people right and like they kind of yeah. get hurt all the time and it's crazy because the fact that this is this is people that are looking for that kind of pain because it's kind of the pain that they were always kind of created since they were kids since they were small so there's a part of their body that kind of like feeds on that and ego requires ego and that what they call that the pain body like it's they're they're two life forms i like they call them that require like they are very hungry and you know they typically feed on on those things that are going to again like the accumulation like you know the 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 wanting more and like the the or a lot of times it's more about the reaction that we have the reactivity we have with the world right if somebody tells you like you know i'm better than you and you react to that that's just essentially kind of like a like a, a immediate hit in the ego and that ego needs to kind of fight back that's the way that it kind of fuels itself so the the best way to to start to ponder on that and realize and that is a fact that a lot of times that's just that's a part of you but it's not really you um it's just you know that's not the real essence of you know who we are and again it's it gets deep but it's definitely something that um let me is it a is it a hard read because it's very very like self-exploratory like yeah. you have to like put it down and okay yeah, Dude, you those, have to do a lot. Of, you have to books reflect a lot. Hard. You gotta like, holy yeah. crap! Like, let me let me take a step back here because like this is just insane. What it just what I just read, right? Or like what or or what does this mean to me, right? Yeah. And like all the different things that a lot of times are like it make it's it's making a lot of sense. So yeah, it requires like you know reflection, and 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 it requires a lot of times to just like take a step back to really kind of like digest everything. Ah. Uh. Those books are hard, man. I think the last one that I had to put down that I haven't reapproached was Liz Plank's So You Want to Talk About Men. She addresses patriarchy and misogyny, and I'm like, oh, yeah. like, it's hard, man. This shit is hard. Hey, so, hey, finding yourself and trying to, to make sure that you're showing up as your healthiest version is it's fucking work. So, yeah, dude, it's, as, it's as, difficult, as, but it's worth it. Yeah, it's very worth it. Well, man, I, uh, obviously I'll, I'll shoot Tony a message to you cause he had to go, man. But I, uh, as always, man, appreciate your friendship, brother. I appreciate who you are as a human. Uh, I'm sending you hugs and love, man. I love you and GB so damn much. So I appreciate Thank you me. taking some time, yeah. man. Absolutely, um, dude. Thank you so much. For so, uh, on. yeah, of course, dude, of course. So as a pod family, uh, what can we support you with? What sort of big things you have going on that you're excited about? I know you're, you're obviously trying to find yourself back into fulfillment here. So like, how can we support you, bro? Um, I think the best support is just like, you know, bringing awareness to who we are in our brand and, and, mm -hmm. you know, and just kind of reaching out for help. I'm not necessarily saying like, Hey, come and like work with us or coach you, but we do have um, a pretty good coaching program that kind of similar to you goes beyond just nutrition and really kind of dives deep into um, our habits, our lifestyle, like our mindset and, and really how we can kind of start to change and, and shift the way we think so we can change the way we live and, and eat. Um, and, and that is a, a, a really, it's been a really cool process to see it build because of the fact that, 
you know, people, it's crazy because like we people think like, or they, they say that we kind of brainwash them. And in a way, it's like kind of what we want to do in a good <laughs> yeah. way. It's like brainwashing. To yeah. Think I always tell people about, I'm going to haunt you in the best of ways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's, you know, we're going to change the way your brain operates right now. So, so that's kind of what we do in our, in our nutrition blueprint method, um, which is kind of like what, what we have been kind of doing so far. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can definitely kind of check us out or at least I like, kind of check out my Instagram or join our Facebook community, which is like pretty up and coming. Um, and uh, yeah, those are the main names. I love how our pitches have died down a whole lot more because uh, we've just started to embody different CEOs, I guess. Uh, yeah, that was- I just I just feel like, you know what you I mean? Know, <laughs> it, it also depends on, you know, on the, on the type of, of, of places that I'm kind of speaking to. But the point uh, is, yeah, like, course, I'm, I'm coming still- here mostly because I I, I love to to chat with you guys and, and kind of like exchange information, not necessarily kind of expecting anything out of it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, but I was still pitch, you know, you definitely want to join my program. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. But, I know. I yeah just in general, I just I just think it's just more of a fun conversation and uh, it just happens to be recorded and actually put on the Internet for people to listen to. Yeah. All right. All right. So as a pod family, uh, we'll make sure we put all of these gentlemen's info in there. Uh, you're probably already following them from past pods. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we had a little bit of a round table and we'll be doing that a little bit more as we step into season seven. We're almost at episode 100. So you know how big that is for me as a pod family, because I overthought this damn project way too much. And so for me, getting an episode 100, uh, I have so much fucking gratitude for you all as listeners and pod family. Uh, and obviously, Andres, you're an extension of that as well, my friend. So I appreciate you, bro. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me, dude.